you know, heading into I guess the fourth game, what, what can what do you take from, from what you see from the girls so far? Um, we've won the three games in different in different manners. Eventually, however long it takes, if, if all those pieces come together, we could you know possibly put put a put a decent game together. Um, but really, all we're asking from them at the moment, because they're coming up against quality opposition week in, week out, is that the starting point's got to be the competitiveness and the um, desperation and the spirit to actually get the game on your on, on your terms and then see if you can offensively get some scoring going. What do you make of um, GWS? They're quite similar to us, actually. They, they play a, a fairly uncomplicated, spirited, energetic game. Uh, they've gradually got better as the weeks have gone on. And um, I think we're up for a, a real battle. We, we had them four weeks or five weeks ago in a practice game up here. And um, they, they certainly gave it to us physically that day. So um, I, I'd expect nothing less this weekend. What have you made of the popularity of it, of, of the competition so far? And, and the, cr the home crowd last week, probably a similar crowd this week. Yeah, I think at this time of the year, I think the footy public just wants to see um, two sides where there's actually something on the line. Um, and the fact that we've been able to find that little window in between the summer sports and and uh, and the real winter sports uh, kicking kicking on, I think that's that's uh, been a really a good thing for us. Um, so I think you know if you're a, if you're a football supporter and you want to come and see two teams that are really going, you know, really hard for the four points, then coming to watch the the AFLW has been a really good outlet for you. Um, and I reckon you know every state in Australia we're seeing that that's real interest, a little bit of curiosity just to see what it what it looks like. But I think people that are new to it are quite blown away by uh, the competitiveness and the and the skill level and the and the spirit that the players show. What do you think you can do for the game in, in Queensland, which has had some rough years? I was at the uh, the boys game on Sunday as well, and sort of equal numbers at both. But uh, probably slightly different crowd at both. I think um, I think our, our game in the weekend on Saturday was more yeah, a lot more females there watching for a start, um, and probably you know young girls there with families as well coming along to have a look. So you know if we can capture the imagination of those young kids coming through, that's primarily one of the reasons this comp exists actually to get to grow the numbers at junior level and and get the young kids engaged and and see afl as being a sport that they can not only play through their youth but if they're good enough go and do something professionally with it can you see the interest wearing off eventually and evidently it'll just become routine um well, that's what i hope not <laughs> i hope it in I, some respects hope yeah. that, that does and it's just yeah, women's comp, the interest is there. Oh, it becomes normal. Yeah, I think that's probably what we're all striving for. I mean, um, even this morning's press, there's a few players in the league that are sort of asking the, the AFL to extend the season and, and make it, uh, you know, more like a, a full-time professional career for them and a, and a full season. Um, so that's, that's a discussion that we didn't think we'd be having six months ago. Um, so if they want to fast-track it and get things going quickly, that I think you, you wouldn't get any, um, you know, complaints from the players and... They'd be quite happy to, you know, get it going as quickly as they could. And I, I dare say there's probably some other clubs out there banging on the door a bit louder too now about trying to get a women's team in as well. So, yeah, it's it's the last month has been quite amazing in terms of um, no one expected it to be as popular or uh, to capture the public's imagination like it has. So, um, if the league was to go to 18 teams like the men's, do you think there's enough depth in the women's game at the moment? Yeah, not not next year. Oh, not next year. <laughs> um, yeah, like a, uh, I think it's a. I don't know, whatever the number is, five, ten year build probably. Um, but um, all I know is every time we run an under 18s nationals, there's a there's a group of young players coming through there. They're just about ready to play national league, um, and I don't see that changing this year either. So um, essentially, there's you know probably enough talent there for one or two teams every year for the next couple of years. But um, I think the other thing we've found too is that we're getting the quality athlete coming from other sports that probably grew up and played a bit of basketball, a bit of footy, and then realised they couldn't play footy for a career, but now coming back to AFL. So there's a bit of that going on as well. So I think there's, you know, there's still a lot of untapped talent out there that um, this league is, is slowly starting to flush out. Uh, two changes this weekend. Uh, you talked about players coming from other sports. Yeah. Uh, what are you expecting from your two debutants this weekend? Yeah, well, we've um, we've had a, a force change in our back line. Kate Deegan comes in for Talia Randall, who's a bit sore in her shoulder. Um, Kate's uh, on our rookie list and came across from uh, the Annerley Soccer Club last year and played a few games down at Cooparoo and and uh, instantly sort of caught our eye. 
in terms of just her game awareness and her general skill level and winning her own ball. So those sorts of things will hold her in good stead tomorrow. She's quite athletic. Um, and then in the forward line, we've probably gone, gone for a little bit of a structure change down there just to get um, a little bit more size and, and, um, and I guess, physicality around the ground level ball in our forward line. Um, so uh, Jordan Membry gets her chance uh, down in that part of the ground as well. So. Um, yeah, they've, we've been really lucky with the first two changes that we've made for four weeks um, and we think, you know, we, we, if, if anything we gain a bit uh, with these two players coming in. Craig, did you know your girls would be this competitive or have they surprised you as well? Um, you always, I mean, you always think they're competitive. It's probably like someone owning a racehorse. You probably think <laughs> your horse is the best in, the, in Australia. but. Um, you know, we, we always think that our, our team are, uh, are adept and, and competitive and, you know, we read all the stuff across the summer and I guess the only handle that anyone had on uh, what the teams looked like was, um, you know, how well they knew them from their local competitions and the VFL being the most publicised of the national state comps, I guess all the scrutiny was there. Um, yeah, really, really hard to judge. I mean, one thing you could look at, I guess, was, you know, how many players had played in the old exhibition games in, in years gone by um, and sort of stack those up team by team and we were pretty well placed in that category um, but you never know until they get out there and and the other thing too is we've got interstate players that joined our group who now feel like you know born and bred Queenslanders so they're part of the part of the gang and um, you know getting them into the group and feeling at home was was a big challenge but yeah, yeah you'd, to answer your question you, you never really know but you're hopeful